scary stories. So this happened about two years ago. Some days before Christmas, I live in Italy and I'm Italian, so I'm not really good with English. Please be patient with me. As I was saying, this story happened two years ago, some days before Christmas. My boyfriend came visiting from Rome and I went to the train station to pick him up. After that, we went shopping and we walked around my city to spend some good time together. I didn't have a car, so to take him home, we had to use a bus. To get home, I usually have to travel something about 40 minutes. The ride takes really long and passes through some small towns in front of the sea. At a certain point, a guy gets on the bus and starts staring at us angrily. I wasn't sure why, and me and my boyfriend started looking at each other confused. Eventually, the guy looked for a seat that straight looked in front of us and started to talk to us about something we couldn't understand and kept staring at us as if we did something wrong. I was really scared because he kept looking towards us, so my boyfriend gave me a kiss to calm me down as he was looking at his phone to check some posts on Facebook. After that, the guy started to say out loud, Yes, you, pervert, make me some photos while kissing your stupid girlfriend. I bet you gay. Everyone started looking at the guy, and then us, and people were confused. But after that, the situation calmed down. Everyone must have thought that he was on drugs. We eventually got off the bus, and while we were getting off, the guy pushed my boyfriend, and we didn't see him for a while. But this is not the first and last time I met this guy. Every time I met him on the bus, he would get super mad if anyone got their smartphone in hand. And the second time I met him, he kicked my ankle and started to scream to point my phone screen towards him to check if I was making any photos. Then proceeded to threaten me that if I ever got my phone out in his presence, he would shoot me in the head. In that situation, I was freaked out, but I kept my calm and started to tell him in a totally chill voice that I wasn't making any photos and that if he would ever shoot me on the bus, he would have a hard time escaping without any witnesses. When he eventually got off while cursing and insulting me, the bus driver and everyone on the bus started asking if I was okay, if I wanted to call the police, but I remained calm and said that if I ever met him again, and if the same thing happened, I would have certainly done something. I met him many times again. He didn't do anything that made me call the cops on him. He just looked at me angrily as usual. I think about this person sometimes and wonder if something traumatic happened to him to make him so angry, or if he was on drugs, or if that person has problems that make him so upset but hey, weird angry bus guy, let's not meet again. I have a friend, a guy, who I knew in 2015 when I was 15 years old. He was 18, and he quickly became my best friend. So this friend from 2015 to mid-2016, I kept him close. Then I went to Canada. I started a new life at the university. And he has his own computer science university. And it's very sad. But we lost contact. But after everything is fine, right? With social networks, we can talk to each other at any time. So one day, 2016, I get an invitation from him. Apart from the fact that he was not a fan of social networks like Facebook and that his photos was not 100% like him, but a little bit. I'm just thinking he changed in six months. I haven't seen him. I can't really judge. So it is in 2016. Let's go back to the fact that I moved and that we lost contact in 2017. We talk a lot even if he is not really active on the networks, but what doesn't matter, I don't really monitor. Then until 2019, we don't talk anymore. Not for birthdays, for nothing. 
Sad, but that's life. A friend of mine advises me to contact him after all. He was important. We resume contact. The thing is, the previously mentioned friend became friends with him. Anne. So Anne is now friends with him. The months go by, everything is fine, and the day I write this post, we are April 24, 2020, and I received by dozens of messages from people I don't know and from him saying, Sin code do not do the innocent. At the beginning, I tell myself this is hacking, but I keep getting messages over and over. I don't understand anything. I call my sister, then my friend in stress and in tears. My sister tries to reassure me, then Anne keeps saying, Sorry, I tell her it's not her fault, I'm just afraid. Finally she tells me that she researched Facebook, and it turns out that it is not really him. It's him without being him. A false life has been created on social networks, someone I've indulged in for years, who knows me well. That is to say, that I told him, thing personal things. He may have used my photos on Facebook or whatever without really knowing it, and behind all that, it made me panic. I am not used to upheavals like that. I tried to confront him. He blocked me from all sides and deactivated. This guy was my friend without being one. I finally became friends with a stranger who was doing things definitely not clean on the internet, and I never realized it. I don't check Facebook friends lists, I don't check each other's likes, knowing that I contacted him on a different means than Facebook, I knew that he was really the one behind that. I also know, I also knew that it was him because once he became once to Canada and I contact him like I leave class, we meet at 6pm and it is he who is there at 6pm shows that he has never been hacked. Something else, the photos he posted from his travels were taken from the net. How far the lie has gone. I don't know his family, just a few friends, that's all. It may not sound terrifying because he is not a criminal, or at least I think, but imagine for a second that your best friend created things on the internet for I don't know what reasons and you got involved in it and one of your friend outside of it. Part of your world is falling apart. Maybe he used my photos, my personal message, to him for years, etc. I do something with it. I don't know. I recently learned some chilling details about a person that was heavily involved in my life as a child, and I thought I would share the story. Throughout my childhood, I was extremely shy and did not find myself going out of my way to make friends in new settings. I had recently started preschool at my grandmother's church and I remember being on the playground playing by myself when a woman introduced herself to me. Her name was Candy and she looked like any other sweet old woman. She almost reminded me of my own grandmother with her abundance of white curls on her head. Candy was a volunteer at the church and typically watched over the children while they played so we could see each other fairly often. I can't remember much about the start of this friendship but I presume one thing led to another before I was frequently spending time with her in and out of school. My parents were grateful to have someone who was interested in watching me. As I was the youngest of three and my parents worked full time while also taking my brother and sister to and from school, sports, or to their friends' houses. So having a helping hand was a blessing for them. To be honest, I don't remember too many details about spending time with Candy, but I suppose we spent our time frequenting ice cream shops parks, etc. I do have one memory of going to her house where I had never been before and as she was showing me around I remember passing through the dining room and seeing another girl who looked to be around 10 or 12 years old. Candy introduced me to her and told me that she lived down the street and would spend a lot of time at her house. I am not sure why 
but I remember being jealous. I guess I was jealous that Candy also cared for and spent time with another little girl. I had never felt that way before, and I'm not sure why I remember that so clearly. For some reason, that was the only time I went to her house. Fast forward a few years, and I am in first grade. I had totally forgotten about Candy and had not seen her since I graduated preschool. Two years prior, my neighbors, who I carpooled to school with, had dropped me off at my house after school one day, and I spotted a Target grocery bag hooked to our front door. I wasn't sure what it could be or why my brother or sister didn't bring it inside when they arrived home from school an hour or so before me. Once I took a look inside, I noticed writing on the bag indicating that there was a gift inside for me from Candy. I ran up the stairs to my room and to my surprise, there were several adorable brand new outfits inside just for me. I immediately tried them on and was so excited to show my mom when she came home from work. After my mom got home, I eagerly showed her the outfits that Candy had left for me. Unfortunately, my mom was not as excited as I was. In fact, she was quite angry. She yelled at me to take them off that she would be returning them to Candy. I was so confused as to why she was upset with me. What did I do wrong? These were free clothes, a gift. Wouldn't it be rude to return a gift to someone? To avoid being punished, I put the clothes back in the bag and handed them to my mother. We never spoke of this again and Candy slipped my mind for the next several years. A few years ago, my sister was home visiting from college with nothing else to do. We decided to go to Target to shop for useless things we didn't need. As we were walking through the parking lot, the thought of the Target bag from Candy randomly dawned on me. I proceeded to laugh and ask my sister if she remembered and if she knew why my mom was in such an awful mood that day to force me to give the clothes back to Candy. My sister stopped dead in her tracks and said, Wait, do you not remember what Candy did to us? Taken aback, I shook my head and begged her to tell me what had happened. She refused to talk about it and told me to ask my mom. Once again, the thought of Candy slipped to my mind and I didn't remember to ask my mother about what happened until I was in college a few years later. We were saying goodbye to my grandmother at her craft lunch when she mentioned to my mom that someone's funeral was that weekend. They then sat in silence for a few minutes, just staring at each other. After my grandma left, I asked my mom who they were talking about, and she informed me about Candy's death. The realization that I had never heard the true stories about this woman crossed my mind, and I asked my mom about what my sister refused to speak on. My mother proceeded to relay the horrible stories to me about the little old woman that tried to take me away from my family and was someone that they trusted. However, Candy's intentions were questioned by my grandmother, who shared a few of her concerns with my father after hearing some odd stories from her at church. She felt as though something was off with Candy, and she didn't like that I spent so much time with her, coming from a woman who never had a negative thing to say about anyone. My father became slightly weary of Candy, but he assumed that my grandmother was just being overly cautious. After some time of Candy watching over and babysitting me, her demeanor changed and she started acting possessive of me. She would show up unannounced to our house asking for me and if I wasn't there, she would become incredibly angry and yell at my parents about how awful they were. She would continuously tell them that they didn't deserve me and only she was worthy of taking care of me. This happened several times before my parents told her to stop coming to the house or they would call the police. This inclined her to start calling the house and leave messages for me, which my parents obviously would not tell me about. In these voicemails, she would cry to me and try to convince me to leave with her and leave my family. She would talk about how awful my parents were and how she could give me a much better life than they could. 
The voicemails that were intended for me soon turned to threats for my parents. She threatened to call the police or child services to have me removed from the home and placed into her care. She threatened to tell the police about my parents' violence and abuse towards me and my siblings, none of which was true. Once she realized her phone calls were not working, she began making efforts to show up at the house again. She started by driving up and down our street day after day. She would ask our neighbors and then the neighbor's children if anyone knew if I was home or where I was. She would park her car and watch our house without anyone really noticing or saying anything. Eventually, our neighbors began recognizing her car and what was going on, and they would inform my parents when she came around asking about me. After some time of doing this, she took it upon herself to come to the front door, while my brother, who was likely only 12 years old at the time, and I were home and she started banging on the door, begging to see me. My brother opened one of the front doors, keeping the storm door between them closed, and told her to leave. She proceeded to plead with him to let her in, and he replied that I was not home. Despite me napping soundly upstairs, cheers for smart 12-year-old brothers. Candy partially forced herself through the door when my brother put his hand in her face, pushing her out the door, and told her that the police had been called. She left after that and distanced herself for a while before she encountered in the final straw with my brother. One day, my mother and I were backing out of the driveway to attend a birthday party. When Candy pulled in behind our car, blocking us from leaving, she came up to the window and my mother rolled it down, ready to tell her off for good. Candy ignored her and looked right past my mother into the back seat where I was sitting. She said, Would you rather come with me and never see your mom again? I love you so much more than I ever did. I can give you everything you want if you come with me. That was the final straw. For my mother, she never thought that she would be upset or fight with an old woman. But the day had come when it was absolutely necessary. She screamed and yelled at her, making sure to include that Candy would regret the day that she never came into contact with me or my family again. Something she said must have actually scared Candy because she drove off and didn't appear in our lives again until the target bag incident. I'm not sure how I never knew that any of this happened and never thought anything was weird about her when I was a child, but I guess my parents did a good job of shielding me from the horrors of that situation. After hearing about everything that took place, I assumed that there must have been a reason she became so obsessed with me. Did she not have her own family? Did she lose children or grandchildren and wanted to find someone to fill the void? According to my mother, she had several children that were much older than me, as well as young grandchildren. Thus, I'm not sure what would have sparked her interest in me, but thankfully, we no longer have to worry about her. Part of me still wonders if I repressed any memories or conversations with her that were upsetting. Did she ever privately talk to me? about how awful my parents were, or how she wanted to take me away from my family. Did I ever agree to leave with her? I also wonder if, as I grew older and joined social media like Facebook, did she ever search my name? Did she ever watch me when I was in middle school, high school, or even when I went away for college? I have so many questions, but I'm glad that we never had to find out if she was going to follow through with any of her threats. As a word of advice, always trust your grandmother's instincts about another grandmother and do not befriend the old woman volunteering on the playground. And finally, to the woman who made my parents' lives a living hell, let's not meet again.